What's up everybody, it's Priyon Joni. So today we're gonna answer a question that I get asked a lot. How do you connect your entry-level controller onto some speakers? This video is brought to you by Direct Music Service. It's your one-stop shop to find music from several genres with clean and dirty edits, re-edited intros and outros, along with different remixes so you can cater specifically to your dance floor. And if you're like me, who's always on the road, DMS also has this awesome mobile app so that you could listen to your favorite tracks, put them on your wish list, and they'll be ready for you on your laptop in your Dropbox folder. Go to directmusicservice.com today to sign up. So some of you guys may have come across my videos and decided to buy an entry-level controller. And what you find is on most entry-level controllers, the output is an RCA output, a left one and a right one. And when you look on a main mixing board or the back of your powered speakers, a lot of times you find that they take XLR or quarter inch. Sometimes they have RCA as well. The question that I get a lot is, what is the right way to connect your entry level controller that has RCA outputs to your speaker system or the main system at a bar or nightclub? So let's talk about a few things first. By design, an RCA connection, no matter what, is an unbalanced signal. I have a video on the difference between balanced and unbalanced cables. I recommend that you guys check that out. But in a nutshell, an unbalanced signal is prone to signal interference. Therefore, when you have an unbalanced connection, it's really important that you keep it short. When you're at home, six feet or less is no problem when you have studio monitors on your desk or on your DJ table. But when we're talking about 15 feet or 20 feet or across the room, to the speakers, it's really important to convert the unbalanced signal to a balanced signal. The other thing about entry-level controllers is that the signal output is a lot weaker than professional-grade controllers. Sometimes people talk about how entry-level controllers don't have as good sound quality, but the reality is what they're referring to is actually signal strength. Not always, but many times it's just about the amount of volume this little controller that's USB-powered can output. So basically, you have two things you have to solve. Number one, you have to find a way to reduce or eliminate the interference. And number two, you have to find a way to boost the signal so that you have a strong signal that's going out to the speakers. So solution number one, if you're using, say, small studio monitors at home, as I mentioned earlier, and they have RCA inputs on the back of them, it's totally okay to plug your entry-level controller via RCA to those speakers. You're probably not gonna use them too loud, but a lot of times they do have a gain knob behind them, so you can boost the signal up to your liking. The thing to note is to make sure that the RCAs aren't overly long, you know, like 15 feet, 20 feet long. Just make sure you got something that's like three, five, six, maybe even 10 feet that can just reach to the speakers. You probably wouldn't have them that far anyways. A lot of times RCA wires are put together and you may have to split them apart so that you can go to each speaker. What I like to do is actually taking two identical pairs of RCAs and just using one wire each and going to one speaker and the other so I don't have to split them apart. If the speakers that you have at home doesn't have an RCA input, say it has a quarter inch or an XLR input, it's all right to get a wire that's RCA on one end and quarter inch or XLR on the other end or to use an RCA wire and just use a quarter inch or XLR adapter at the other end of it. Now the back of these speakers might say it's a balanced input on the quarter inch or XLR side. However, because you're using RCA and you're not converting it to balanced, the whole signal path all the way to the speaker will be unbalanced. So keep in mind, watch your length. So on these next scenarios, we're gonna talk about plugging your entry level controller onto a bigger system, say at the nightclub or your mobile gig. So solution number two, is to use what's called an active direct box. What a direct box is, is it's a device, small device, that can convert an unbalanced signal to a balanced signal. The type you need is a dual active direct box. A normal direct box can convert an unbalanced signal to a balanced signal. However, if it's passive, it actually kills a lot of the signal strength. You already have a low signal strength from your entry level controller, and you're gonna lose a lot more of it using a passive direct box. The reason why we want an active one is because an active direct box has the capability of boosting the signal. Also, the reason why I recommend a dual one is because you have a left channel and a right channel. 
having a dual one all in one box saves you the setup time, some space and the money from needing two active direct boxes. A direct box usually has a quarter inch input on it. So what you're gonna need is an RCA wire that goes to quarter inch, whether it's an RCA to quarter inch wire, or if it's an RCA wire with quarter inch adapters. You wanna make sure that the wire that goes from your entry level controller to your direct box is a short one. In fact, you probably don't even need it to be that long. You can keep it near you. Three feet is good. In fact, a one footer is good. That'll help reduce any potential for signal interference in the unbalanced line. From the direct box to the amplifiers or speakers, you can do XLR cables as long as you need them. Basically, an active direct box acts as a preamp for your weaker signal entry level controller, and it keeps the signal strength consistent in longer signal paths. I'll leave a link to active direct boxes in the pinned comments below. When you start looking up active direct boxes, you notice that their prices can range up to $200. But there is an alternative to converting your unbalanced signal to balanced signal and going straight to your speakers. And it adds some extra benefits to it. So number three, use a small mixing board that can take stereo signals and it outputs a balanced signal. This is a Behringer Xenix Q802 USB mixer. It's an eight channel mixer. It actually has two dual channels that you can plug a stereo source to. The output of this mixer is a balanced output. So just that right there, it already does what a direct box can do. Now, what else can it do? It also has a balanced output for control room. And the advantage you have with that is you can use that as your booth monitor output. In addition to that, it also has a three band EQ. So you can have a little bit of equalization control right on the mixer before it goes out to your speakers. And of course, there's also two XLR inputs right on the mixer itself so you can plug a microphone into. I would highly recommend actually using these microphone inputs as opposed to the unbalanced microphone input that's on your entry level controller. In fact, I'm learning that a lot of mobile DJs don't actually directly plug their controller, no matter what kind of controller they use, directly to the speakers. They usually route it to a PA mixer, just like the Q802, so that they could take advantage of the microphone preamps on these mixers. A common complaint about all DJ controllers is the microphone preamps. Sometimes they tend to distort before they get to an effective volume. Behringer is not an expensive brand, but I can tell you right now that their preamps are sometimes used in the studio because they're that good. <laughs> Heavy metal producers use it for miking guitar amps. And this Q802 is only 89 bucks on Amazon. And for 89 bucks, that's actually cheaper than some active direct boxes. I highly recommend using a PA mixer if you need some EQ control, if you need booth monitor outputs, and if you need extra or better microphone inputs. If you need more microphones, you can always get a bigger one, but do be careful with the smaller ones because as I was doing some of the research for this mixer, I found that the smaller Behringer mixers don't have um, balanced outputs and they're not very clarified. When you look at this mixer, you see that there are actually RCA inputs. I wouldn't use those. I would use one of the stereo channels. The type of wire I would use, just like the direct box, use an RCA to quarter inch to go into one of those channels. Try to keep it short, just as long as you need. I'm also gonna leave a link below in the pinned comments for the Q802. So recommendation number four, this is going to apply more to if you are DJing with someone else who already has DJ gear, or if you're at a nightclub that already has gear there. So number four is plug into a DJ mixer or a DJ controller. And if you're at an event and there's a DJ playing before you on a controller or a DJ mixer with some decks, and that mixer or controller is not going anywhere, you could just take an RCA cable and plug into one of the channels of that mixer or controller. If that mixer or controller is already plugged into the main systems, there's no need to make it complicated by bringing out your direct box and trying to plug in through the XLR connection. Just keep it simple. Plug in RCA into the existing mixer or DJ controller. Now, where do you plug into? If it's a four channel like a DJM 900 Nexus 2, I would recommend going into one of the actual channels. 
In fact, I think that's your only choice on that four channel mixer. Avoid plugging into the ones called Phono because those are made for turntables. And if you feed a line signal into that, you can actually fry the RIAA preamp inside that mixer. Same goes for a DJ controller. Now, what if it's a two channel mixer like the DJM S9? Number one, the DJM S9 has an auxiliary input with a volume knob. You can plug your entry level controller into that with no problem. However, if you're DJing with another DJ and he happens to be one of those people who play into the red, when you max out your volume, safely max out your volume on your entry level DJ controller, you will find that he is still a lot louder than you are. That's because the auxiliary input on a DJ MS9 and a lot of battle mixers don't have a way to boost the signal. A lot of times when you're chained to an S9, you sometimes have to turn off the master to get to that level as the guy that was actually playing on the S9. Well, what's the second option? Well, the second option is to actually plug your RCA directly into the line level input of one of the channels. That actually gives you the option to be able to boost the gain using the trim knob on the channel so that you can balance the signal strength with the guy who's actually spinning with you. The only problem with that is in order to switch to that channel, that person who's DJing on the S9 has to end on the other channel from the one you're plugged on so that you can switch. I generally prefer plugging into the channel, not just for the ability to boost the signal, but also so that I have EQ controls, thanks to the EQ on the channel strip. That way I can always keep my EQ on the DJ controller at neutral if I have to do any fine tune adjustments in case it's too much bass or not enough. If you're plugging into a four channel DJ controller like a DDJ 1000 SRT, I recommend going into channels three or four. Now, if it's a two channel controller like the DDJ SR2 that doesn't have an auxiliary input, then you have no choice but to use one of the line level channels. In fact, it has only one RCA input for each channel and it's switchable between phono and line you wanna make sure to switch that to line. Now on the new DDJ800, that two channel DJ controller has an auxiliary input, but it does have a signal boost switch. I believe it's 12 dB. Now it doesn't have an EQ, but it does give you a signal boost. My guess is it was designed that way because they expect someone with an entry level controller to be plugging into it. And the advantage to going to a club that already has existing DJ gear there is you only need an RCA type wire to plug into it because the type of inputs on DJ gear is all RCA connectors. Now, what if I walk into a venue, say it's a music venue, and the main mixing board is all the way across the room and they just give you some XLR plugs? Well, if you have an entry level controller, you know that your signal is unbalanced and you need to convert to balance. Best thing for the sound engineer to do is to actually bring out his direct box, but a lot of times they might not have any extra. So what do you do? You pull out your active direct box or your small PA mixer. In fact, you wanna be really good friends with a sound engineer at a music venue because he or she can make your night great or make your night a living hell. They deal with musicians and DJs that don't know anything about sound and audio and pulling out an active direct box not only makes their job easier, but it also scores some brownie points so they don't give you a hard time during your night when you play. What if I go to a nightclub, bar, or any venue and what they have there is a PA mixer? Well, the same setup applies to if you had a PA mixer yourself. You wanna always be carrying RCA to quarter inch wires or what I do is I always carry RCA to quarter inch adapters. So all I have to do is plug into one of the stereo channels on that mixer. Now, what if the mixer doesn't have any stereo channels. It's all individual channels. Not to worry, plug your wire into one channel each, and then you just have to remember to pan each channel, one to the left, one to the right, and make sure that the gain knob is equal to each other. Try to keep the gains well below the point where you're at your loudest so that it doesn't hit the red light or you're gonna click your signal. And then you turn the volume up on both of them equally. It's not very complicated. I work at several venues where that is the setup. What if your scenario is, hey, I have powered speakers. It has an XLR input, it has a quarter inch input, and it has an RCA input. In fact, there's two, there's a red one and a white one. Can't I just plug into that speaker and chain that speaker to the other speaker? The answer is yes, 
you can do that. However, the obvious issue to that is your wire length. How far do you have to run an RCA wire to that speaker that's taking the RCA input? If it's too long, you'll be prone to interference. Now, if your speaker doesn't have an input gain knob or a way to boost the signal, now you also have the problem of having a weak signal that's going to both speakers. Now, the third problem with that is the fact that if a powered speaker takes the input of your left and right channel and goes straight to the speaker, and you have that speaker that's chained to the input of the other powered speaker, what you're gonna get is actually a mono signal. It's not going to be in stereo. Now I know some engineers and some DJs argue that mono is better. If that is your preference, then this might be totally fine for you. But because a lot of powered speakers don't currently have a way to split the RCA signal to a left channel and a right channel when it's chained, you're going to result in a mono signal. That might be okay for you if you're using it as a monitor or you're in a venue that has monoed zone speakers all around. But when I have two speakers that I'm working with, I want that stereo depth in there. In fact, as a music producer, whether people on the dance floor notice or not, I would prefer that they enjoy the music that I make in the wide stereo field that I image as I made that song. So if your speaker distance isn't really that far and you have a way to boost the signal, an RCA cable that goes to the left speaker and an RCA cable that goes to the right speaker might be okay. But I would still say it's better to use a direct box or a small PA mixer to go to those two speakers. All right guys, so like I promised, I'm going to leave a pinned comment down below with recommendations for RCA wires, RCA to quarter inch wires, the PA mixer, and some direct boxes. If you guys got any questions, comments, or anything to add regarding plugging your entry level controller to some speakers, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. We'd love to hear your thoughts, answer any questions, or learn anything new from you guys. If you like this video, be sure to smash that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, be sure to click that subscribe button and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. All right, guys, it was fun. Thanks for watching.